Hi guys, I'm here with your Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. We have a two-day Bible reading again today. So we're going to start off with 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And then we'll be going on to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. So we'll be reading two full chapters today. And our Psalms are Psalms Psalm 30 and Psalm 31 verses 1 through 8. And then we have Proverbs for both days. I'll read the Corinthians back to back. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 we'll be talking about the nature of true apostleship and in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 we'll be talking about dealing with a case of incest which is not a good thing you know not even back then it was not a good thing not at all and still to this day it is not so even back in then it was not accepted especially by God even since the beginning of time incest was not accepted whatsoever and you will hear that today I got on the best lip gloss I have had in my life it's a two piece lip gloss and it oh, it smells and tastes so good it's clear on top and the bottom looks sparkly but you can't really see much sparkle but it's raspberry sorbet raspberry orange sorbet and it's lip smacker so good it smells just like that and tastes just like it so good So anyways, if you guys would like to follow along with me, we'll be reading in the New International Version. I sure wished our insurance would start covering an eye doctor. Surely need glasses. I haven't been able to get none for three years. Really need some. And sure has to wear them every day. And really needs a new pair wish they'd get done fighting and get it settled makes it difficult to read sometimes so I apologize if I mess up at times my eyes go blurry sometimes. It's really embarrassing. I try to use, you know, reading glasses at times you see me wearing. Or my old glasses that I've had from three years ago. But they don't work as good, you know. They don't, they don't work very good. And plus, I've been having a lot of bad headaches, and or I'm really anemic now, and it's getting worse. So I've been having really bad headaches and a bunch of other horrible symptoms. So I've been really just feeling like crap lately. I've been getting all these weird symptoms, and I'm like. This is, why am I getting, why am I feeling this way? I'm, I'm getting, you know, like really weird symptoms. Like, I've been starting to crave burnt popcorn really bad. And I've been eating it every day. And craving nothing else but burnt popcorn and ice. Just all of a sudden. <laughs> and I'm like getting really bad headaches. I already get migraines, but these headaches are different. 
and my legs bruising. Every part of my body is bruising. My arms everywhere. And anyway, I look it up online and everything links back to the anemia. And every time I get my blood tests again from the doctor, it's getting lower and lower. So, it all goes back to the anemia. Anyways, let's get started. This, then, is how you ought to regard us, as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the mysteries God has revealed. Now it is required that those who have been given a trust must prove faithful. I care very little if I am judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. My conscience is clear but that does not make me innocent. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. Now, brothers and sisters, I have applied these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, so that you may learn from us the meaning of the saying, Do not go beyond what is written. Then you will not be puffed up in the beginning, in the being of, of a follower of one of us over against the other. For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. You have begun to reign, and that without us. How I wish that you really had begun to reign, so that we also might reign with you. For it seems to me that God has put us apostles on display at the end of the procession, like those condemned to die in the arena. We have been made a spectacle to the whole universe, to angels as well as to human beings. We are fools for Christ, but you are so wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honored, we are dishonored. To this very hour we, are, we go hungry and thirsty. We are in rags, we are brutally treated, we are homeless. We work hard with our own hands. We are cursed, we bless when we are persecuted, we endure it. When we are slandered, we answer kindly. We have become the scum of the earth, the garbage of the world right up to this moment. I am writing this not to shame you but to warn you as my dear children, even if you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. For this reason, I have sent to you Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ. Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. Some of you have become arrogant, as if I were not coming to you, but I will come to you very soon, if the Lord is willing, and then I will find out not only how these arrogant people are talking, but what power they have. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. What do you prefer? Shall I come to you with a rod of discipline, or shall I come in love and with a gentle spirit? Which would you prefer? Would you prefer someone 
come to you with a rod of discipline or come to you with love and a gentle spirit? I think everyone would have the same answer to that. Now we're going to go over to chapter 5 and talk about dealing with incest. This is just one case of it. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that even pagans do not tolerate. A man is sleeping with his father's wife, which would be his mother, and you are proud. Shouldn't you rather have gone into mourning and have put out of your fellowship the man who has been doing this? For my part, even though I am not physically present, I am with you in spirit. As one who is present with you in this way, I have already passed judgment in the name of our Lord Jesus on the one who has been doing this. So when you are assembled and I am with you in spirit and the power of our Lord Jesus is present, hand this man over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough. Get rid of the old yeast, so that you may be a new unleavened batch, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us keep the festival, not with the old bread leavened, with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral, or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave this world. But now I am writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister, but is sexually immoral or greedy an idolater or slander, a drunkard or swindler. Do not even eat with such people. What business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? God will judge those outside. Expel the wicked person from among you. And that's where we're going to stop with 1 Corinthians today. Alright guys, and our psalms, our first psalm, Psalm 30. A psalm, a song for the dedication of the temple of David. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. 
What is gained if I am silenced? Will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my welling into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. And that was Psalm 30. And now we're going to read Psalm 31, verses 1 through 8. For the director of music, a Psalm of David. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock and my refuge a strong fortress to save me, since you are my rock and my fortress. For the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. As for me, I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love. For you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not given me into the hands of my enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. And that was Psalm 31, verses 1 through 8. And now our Psalm, or sorry, our Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 20, verses 28 and 30. And then Proverbs chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. And I'll just go ahead and read them all straight through. Love and faithfulness keep a king safe. Through love is th his throne is made secure. The glory of young men is their strength. Gray hair, the splendor of the old. Blows and wounds scrub away evil and beatings purge the inmost being. In the Lord's hand, the king's heart is a stream of water that he channels toward all who please him. A person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. Amen. Let me read that one again. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 2. A person may think their own ways are right, but the Lord weighs the heart. The Lord knows what's in your heart. People may think they do. They don't. The Lord knows what's in your heart, even more so than you do. Okay, guys, that was our Bible readings for the last two days. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.